Good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us and those who are joining us right now from home or wherever you're at. Um, we thank you that, that you're joining us and, 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 and you, you're, you came to, to a place, you're watching this at home on your phones or on your televisions, wherever you're at. Uh, you're you're going to be blessed. I, I, I know you are going to be blessed and we need you to bless us as well as we lift up our songs and our, and our music. And if you know the song, these are familiar songs to you. If you know them, please sing along with us wherever you're at, wherever you may be, not only in place, but also in time, wherever season that you're going through, whatever is happening in your life, join, lift up your voice. If there's joy, if there's sorrow, uh, sorrow if there's uh, pain, if there's uncertainty, lift up your voice with us. Lift up your voice with us. Lift up your voice. Lift up our voices this morning to our God. One who deserves all the all the glory, all the honor.
face is all I see. Lord, when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. joining us for this song. It's a beautiful song. It's a blessing for you. I want to speak to you, you out there of a great love, a great grace that brought a man out of deep, deep darkness. You see, he lived in an environment in the Northeast called the Devil's Triangle, and it lives up to its name. At the time, he found himself addicted to a $300 a day habit most days called crack cocaine. In the underworld, it's called smoking the devil's pipe. Sometimes to this day, he is judged by the Pharisees of the church for his past. He called upon the name of Jesus And he was brought out of that darkness into the light and bathed in Jesus' great mercy. That man is presenting the sermon to you this day. And I want to sing this praise song because there's a lot out there. There's a lot of you out there that hold yourself to an addiction, whether it be alcohol, drugs, Reach out to the Lord. He wants to bathe you in His love. A lot of us grew up believing at any moment we could lose it all. And at the drop of a hat, God might turn his back and move on A lot of us feel like we blew in Thinking that we're just too far gone But I want you to know There's still hope for you now 
Cause no matter what you've done, you can't erase His love. Cause nothing can change it, not separate it, no matter what. There's never been a better time to get honest. There's never been a better time to get clean. So come as you are, run to the cross, be free. No matter what you've done, you can't erase His love. There's nothing can change it, you're not separated. No matter where you run, He's always holding on. Cause you're still a daughter, you're still a son, no matter what. Don't know what you've been taught, don't know what you've been told. All I know is my God, never let go of me. No. Don't know what you've seen, don't know what you've been through. All I know is my God, never let go of me. the Lord. Call upon that powerful name, Jesus Christ. Just no matter what you've done, you can't erase His love. Cause nothing can change it, not separate it. No matter where you He's always holding on. You're still a daughter. You're still a son. No matter what. You're still a daughter. You're still a son. No matter what. Repent and seek the kingdom of God. Beloved brothers, beloved brethren, on earth and in this physical realm, armies are formed and to their soldiers are given weapons and armament to destroy the enemy and to make him flee. But to us who are called to assemble in the army of God in the spiritual realm, to us is given the sword of the Holy Spirit to take forward the gospel of peace the gospel of salvation, the unadulterated word of God. This book is our armament. This book is our weapon. We do this by the authority given to the name of Jesus Christ. This book is a manual. It is the compass that gives us direction to the promised land, heaven. And today, this day I extend an invitation to those present and to those watching on the other side of the screen to Westside Community Church. That you receive this message, message and be blessed, but that it not only be you who, who receives this message, 
But bring your son, bring your daughter, bring your neighbor in front of that screen. Get them away from watching cartoons and that stuff. For it is written, man does not live by bread alone, but all the words that proceed by, from the mouth of God. Let us open our Bibles to Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 10 to 16, while we prepare to go to battle. I know that from here, if just a fellow human being stood where I am and saw the multitude present here and those receiving this message on the other side of the screen, most likely they would just see flesh. But as for me, a servant of the Lord, I see before me, and on the other side of the screen, for those watching, royal sovereignty, princesses, kings, holy chosen servants, chosen saints, beloved brethren, beloved sister, beloved brother, Beloved son, we make you an invitation to get fed along with us with the word of God. You know, we were created a little lower than the angels, but it is written that whoever received him, to them he gave the power to become sons of God. And in this pilgrimage, man calls life, we shall experience the storms of life. Trials, tribulations, Moments of sadness and moments of heartache, infirmities, treasons, and false accusations. But thus I tell you, be not faint in heart. Be not faint in heart, brother. Because our Savior returns. Our beloved Savior returns. He who gave his life ransom for ours. He shall soon place on our heads the crown of life. He returns and soon he shall dress us in white. For scripture says so. Soon he shall place a ring on our finger. Do not be faint in heart, for he shall dry away our tears, and he shall place us that we may walk in the streets of gold, in the mansion that was prepared for us, not by human hands, but built by the architect of heaven and eternity itself. In this world, when one is passing to a time of need, one dials 911. But our Heavenly Father communicates with his loved ones through the Holy Spirit, which interprets his word, of, his word for us. So it is that in the family of Christ, when we fall indeed, 
We call upon the powerful name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. In this world, families sit down at the dinner, ta dinner table and they nourish themselves with what the trees and the plants of the earth, of the fruit of the grains that the earth yields to strengthen their body. But in the house of our Lord, we are united. For we are nourished with the word of life. Our spiritual food, that it may strengthen our spirit. For man does not live by bread alone. Today I welcome you to sit with us. at the spiritual dinner in our Lord's house. You who are watching on the other side of the screen, beloved listener, to preach with anointment requires faith. To preach with anointment requires faith. We may preach a good sermon, but we must pray and pray in faith that the Lord fill us with the Holy Spirit, that we may preach with anointment, that the Word of God go forward and seed itself in that repentful, contrite, and thirsty heart, that in that heart there be an awakening, that 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 was dead be brought to life. That 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 was dormant awaken. That 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 was without fruit Come forward and give it fruit. That there be a sparrow of spiritual pregnancy, a newborn heart, a spiritual awakening, so that he who has received the sermon, the message, does not only say, what a beautiful sermon, no but rather that it not be content with only saying so, but rather that it sprouts in his heart the will within him to take practice that that was preached. For the word of God exposes, it penetrates and touches that heart it changes that inner beating. It touches that calloused heart. And that heart begins to beat with the new beat of life. Search for the scriptures. If there was something that Jesus, when his holy feet walked in this earth, that he exhorted his disciples for, it was for lack of faith. Scripture is quoted as saying, and it is written, and it is read today, Jesus saying, I am going away. And I am coming back for you. Be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. 
Beloved brother, you who are out there receiving this message with an open heart, I warn you, believe not what you read, rather read what you believe. What am I saying? The newspapers, the media, everything all out there, there is so much falsity. That's why I say believe not what you read, but rather read what you believe, and this is what we believe. For this is the truth. So that we may be informed and enlightened. So that we may be ready. Not that the things are to come catch us by surprise. Because after this that the world is experiencing that I call the carpet pulled from under our feet. Pause. Then the floor shall be pulled from under their feet. But fear not. For we, the children of God, we, the children of light, we, the sons of God, we will be here no longer. Beloved brethren, cheer up and stand fast in persistence. Let us persist in faith, stand up and walk with your head high. Jesus Christ has forgiven your sins. Citizens of the kingdom of the Most High, It is through persistence that we, as his chosen, obtain victory after victory after victory. So therefore, I exhort you, children of God, persist, persist, persist. Let us fight the good fight of faith. For a divine spark has been lit in the inner core of our heart. It purifies us. It prepares us for our divine destiny. I remember being in the military branch, the strongest military branch in the world the United States Marine Corps. I remember out of the 84, I was the smallest. Not only was I the smallest, I was the shortest at five foot one. Not only was I the shortest, I was the lightest, lightest one. For there stood men of six feet two inches in height, 280 pounds. Yet I had to carry the same duffel bag, the same backpack of 60 pounds, almost half my weight, the 45 miles of hiking. And I thought that was hard. And then graduation, the drill instructor got me in his office and he said, there's only three out of the whole group that get meritorious promotion and you're one of them. And I said, no, I do not want it. And he angered. See, I wanted somebody to get it that was gonna make a career out of it. But going through boot camp, I thought that was hard. So the Lord called me to open a mission in Sunland. Man. That's hard. That was hard. But the Lord is with his son, his sons. That is you also. 
every step of the way. For he knows your heart. And he knows your intention. To him, the glory. But let me tell you one thing. Unlike when I said to the drill instructor, I don't want the meritorious promotion. I, like you, will say yes to the crown of life. I, like you, will say yes to being dressed in white. I, like you, will say yes to have the ring placed on our finger. I, like you, will say yes. Sandals placed in our feet. I, like you, will say yes to a new incorruptible body that the Lord will give us. As a Marine, we have a mo we had a motto. We have a motto that says. The few, the proud, the Marines. But thus I tell you, it is written, many, and I say many, are called, but few are chosen. We, and the Marines had a motto that said, once a Marine, always a Marine. But thus I tell you, once a Christian, remain a Christian. You are who receiving this sermon through YouTube. The Lord wants to save you. The Lord wants to make a servant of you. Hearken to his calling. Serve him. The Spirit of the Lord makes the calling. Respond to it. Accept it. For each of us who responds forms a part of God's spiritual army. For we are called to preach the gospel of salvation. I invite you. I invite you, my brother. You who are out there in fighting the good fight of faith. Make yours eternal life. That to which you were called for by which you did that admirable confession of faith in front of many witnesses. Let us go forward with a shield of faith. We find in script, Scripture Jesus constantly exhorting his disciples, again I say, for lack of faith, because it was due to their lack of faith. Beloved brother, let me tell you, faith is the tool. It is the armament that can change you. Through Jesus' name, believing in him, it will change you as it changed me from being a spiritual vagabond and make of you a servant of the Lord. Faith in Jesus Christ is the action which pleases God. Faith in action is the fragrance that ascends through the throne of Jesus and washes his feet. Beloved brethren, Beloved guests, you who receive this message
from the other side of the screen. I invite you, for let it be known that him I who, of whom I speak of is not only here, but is there also with you. So let us open our Bibles to Ephesians 6, 10, and we will read on. Don't be content there where you are sitting down and reading scripture. Join us in standing up. Stand up right there where you are with your Bible. In reverence to the, to the Holy Word of God. Let us read together. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flood and blood, and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded girded with your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, above all, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked ones. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I recognize how ill-prepared I am to stand before thee and preach the gospel. Therefore, I ask you, Lord, that at this moment, with the thongs, Reach out to the altar and place the coal in my mouth. So that when I speak, only in, as an instrument, words that lift flow. Words that give direction. Words that save. Words that bring out of utter darkness to light, those to whom you implant the truth in their heart. In Jesus' name, you may sit. I hold in my hands the sword of the Holy Spirit. This is not just a book, it is the book. It differentiates itself from the billions of books that we find in the shelves of the countless libraries, in the shelves of households. For this book bringeth the truth. It bringeth us to life. This is the manual which guides all of us as spiritual soldiers that we have been called to be chosen to form part of God's army so that we as children of God may, may obtain victory after victory to God, the glory. Now perhaps, just perhaps, there's someone present or someone out there at this moment receiving this message on the other side of this screen 
that is asking himself, finds himself asking in the form of doubt and in the form of a question. If there is truth in this book, if this sword has strength, or maybe there's someone out there that at this very moment, in the form of a question, doubts in this moment and is asking himself, does this sword really, is it a double-edged sword? Is it sharp? Verily I tell you, not only is this sword sharp, but we also find strength and power in it. For this book has given me strength in times of weakness. It is this book who has given me direction when I found myself lost. It is this book that has given me hope in time of doubt. It is this book that gives me rest when I have tired. It has given me knowledge of which I lacked. It has given me joy in times of sadness. Verily I say unto you, truth is a weapon for we once perished for lack of knowledge. And what is knowledge but the truth? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. This book, in it, the truth is revealed by the Holy Spirit in which we will find the power, the right, and the capacity to aggressively attack the prince of darkness of which the world knows as Satan. It is through the power of faith, through the Holy Spirit, through the name given through the authority and power given to the name of Jesus Christ that we shall launch Satan back to the darkness of hell. That he flee away. That he flee away from your life. Flee away from your children. Flee away from your household. That he may hide in the septic tanks and in the sewers and garbage cans of hell. Attack him. Attack him with the truth of which we find in the power of the name Jesus Christ and in his blood. And maybe still to this moment there is someone out there, someone out there that is asking in form of a question. He asks himself, is there power in the word of God? Is it sharp? Can it separate? And so I tell you, it separates the bone from the marrow. It holds the power, the strength, and the sharpness to separate light and cast away darkness. It holds the power to sh separate the sheep and cast away the goats. It holds the power to separate the wheat and cast away the weeds. 
to the fire that awaits. This book is greater and mightier than any other book that exists in this world. It is greater as a mountain is greater in comparison to a single grain of sand. It is greater and mightier in comparison as an ocean is in comparison to a single drop of water. It is greater in comparison as the brightness of the sun is to the flicker of a candle. You see, my brothers, this is the word, this is the lamp that guided our feet and our every path, that guided our every step. This is the pillow to which all believers rest his head on. This book is the umbilical cord to the newborn in Jesus. For as a child, when he is born to this world, and you who are a mother out there know this, when a child is brought into this world, he does not come with an instruction sheet in his hand. Yet when his mother has given birth, after the pains, he places that child in, his bos in her bosom. And the child feeds to nourish himself. And so it is with all the new births in Christ. Feed from the word of God that it may nourish you, that it may strengthen you. This book is to the spiritual newborn in Christ. the umbilical cord to Christ by which we are fed. It is with this word, with this book, that we shall make Satan for the Bible, it, it, it is written in the Bible in Acts 17, 6. It speaks of us. It speaks of us who were once newborn, but no longer drink of milk, but eat of meat of the word. Acts 17, 6 says, that we are sons of God. It says that we are those who have turned the world upside down. It is with this that we shall make Satan flee from us, flee from our marriage, flee from our siblings, flee from our very presence. For he is constantly attacking us and causing us to stumble. Attack him with the name Jesus Christ, so that not only he flees, but the midget minions, demons that serve him, flee with him also. Fight against the principal principalities and ruling powers of darkness against the spiritual host of evil. Good soldier of Jesus Christ, you that have been separated, chosen to serve in God's spiritual war, in which we are given a weapon, a sword. The world laughs at us. But ye remember, it is not you they reject, but him who sends you. 
for we are ambassadors of the truth. Therefore, I encourage you, persist, persist, persist. Persistence knows not what it is to be cold or lukewarm. Persistent only knows faith and its twin brother, victory. Persistent knows not tiredness or, for, or fatigue. For, for we have been given wings of eagles. Persistence knows not to leave for tomorrow that that should be done today. This day was done for you as Psalms 118, 21 says so. This Lord is, this day is made for us. United we as a family of Christ, we shall persist. For we have a calling, for we have a message, for we have a purpose, for we have a father. A seed when planted on the ground fights to sprout through the weight of the dirt of the earth. It fights against the birds of the, birds of the earth. It fights against the winds. It fights against the storms. It is challenged by the winds of the earth. But in that time, the seed gives its fruit. It gives its fruit. Persistence doesn't blame others. Remember, to confess is different than to deny. To affirm is different to deny. To lift or befriend is different to assault. To resolve is different than to make things complicated. The Spirit of the Lord unites us. Satan divides. Jesus came to save, Satan came to destroy. Rejoice and be happy or fall in depression. Forgive or be judged for the wrongs of others. Live not remember, remembering the wrongs that others have done to you. Seek forgiveness through Christ. Christ lifts and saves. Take control. Accept your calling. Accept the work that has been given to you. It is to you. Don't look to the other side. Do not look to, look to your left or to your right or behind you. It is to you that I speak. Accept the calling. The armies of the world unite. And with them, they carry a flag. We, the church, carry an empty cross, for the Lord has risen. And on that empty cross, I see the words across it that says, we can do all things in Christ. And with this, I ask that we stand up. Let us pray. Though we are afflicted in every way, but Lord, we are not distressed. Lord, we are perplexed, but Lord, we are not driven to despair. Though we are persecuted, for sometimes doors are closed and ice on us. We are chased by dogs, geese. We are told by the children that their mother or their father is not home. But Lord, we are not forsaken. We are not struck down and we are not destroyed. Always bearing a God, we go forward always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that life also of Jesus might, might be made manifest in our body. And so, Lord, we ask that you be patient with us. Bathe us in your mercy. We await 
coming. We await, for your bride awaits anxiously. Amen.